Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, workshop called Our Fight Against the Virus, What You Should Know About COVID-19, The Vaccine, and How to Protect Your Family. Um, this workshop is presented by the Community Health Initiative of Kern County, um, a program at Dignity Health, Mercy, and Memorial Hospitals. Uh, my name is Argelia Diaz, and I am the program assistant um, for Community Health Initiative. Uh, first off, I would like to thank everybody for connecting with us today. Um, we will be talking about uh, COVID-19, um, the symptoms, uh, the vaccine, um, the different types of vaccines that are currently available to the community, and also um, who is eligible to uh, receive uh, the vaccine. Uh, first off, we will be talking uh, different uh, about different programs um, that are available that can help you or your family um, obtain health insurance if needed, and also if um, there aren't uh, qualifying for those programs, we'll also touch a little bit about additional resources that are available in the community. Um, so before starting the session, I'll just uh, go through uh, some reminders. Um, so remember to use your full name um, for the opportunity to be um, entered into a raffle at the end of the workshop. Um, for this raffle, you will uh, have to be here uh, present when the raffle is um, being presented at the end. And then uh, we will also uh, require the person, uh, the winner, to come to uh, the hospital and pick up their uh, gift. Um, just a reminder to keep yourselves muted at all times. It's just respect for the presenters that will be um, sharing their information today. Um, the session is being recorded like I initially uh, stated, and this is just to share the recording later on with others. Um, you can always ask questions through their chat. Um, questions will be anonymous um, when made. There will be a question and answer um, portion once we move through the agenda after the presentations, um, and we will be keeping track of the questions that are being um, shared. Feel free to take a break anytime that you need to. Um, and then make sure that your video is on so that the presenter can interact with participants. Um, it's not required. We just always like to um, see participants' uh, faces, um, interact with uh, them, get a little bit more of a better understanding of, of um, the information that's being received from your part. Uh, just quickly, audio and video options. If you are joining us from um, a tablet or a laptop computer, uh, please um, know that this is when you are unmuted. Um, currently, right now, uh, we would like to, to, to be muted. Uh, these are the two options that you could um, see. Uh, also, when your video is on, um, you'll see this these two options here. Uh, when your video is off, um, you'll see the bottom two options. And um, there's more than one way to interact with uh, us. If you would like to uh, raise your hand, um, use your chat, or um, be more interactive and give us a thumbs up, um, a, a hand of applause, you could always use um, those options. Uh, by clicking on these three dots, it'll take you over to um, the options off to my uh, right. On a tablet and a cell phone. And same thing for your laptop or computer. The chat and then reactions button is right here. Um, so I would like to um, hand it off to my um, fellow coworker Rodrigo Vasquez, he will be um, running through the agenda with you guys. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Argelia, for uh, those uh, helpful tips. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're going to be starting off with uh, talking about uh, the community health initiative and the programs uh, that we uh, help uh, community members enroll into. Uh, after our presentation, we will have a, a, a short answer, question and answer period for uh, 
anybody that would like additional information about our programs. And after that, we will have uh, Dr. Jasmine Baines talk about uh, the COVID-19, what you all came uh, here to, to listen to, uh, what you should know about the virus and the vaccine, uh, uh, vaccines actually. And uh, then we'll have question and answers uh, period for, for the doctor. Uh, so uh, let me, uh, I'll tell you, uh, start talking about our program. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Vasquez. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of this workshop on COVID-19 uh, and the vaccine against the virus. I am the program analyst for the Community Health Initiative of Kern County. Uh, we are a program of Dignity Health that provides uh, services to individuals and families in Kern County to help them obtain health insurance coverage. We have been providing this service to the community for almost 20 years, and our services include enrollment assistance into Medi-Cal, Covered California and Medicare programs, as well as food stamps, uh, or also known as CalFresh. Uh, we also offer education to help persons understand program and eligibility rules, to know their, what their health insurance benefits are, and how to keep their coverage. We provide this information to help our community make better use of their health insurance coverage. We also provide post-enrollment support services, such as follow-up on insurance applications, until we obtain a, a determination. Uh, we order new cards for health insurance programs or a health plan. We make appointment with your doctor or any health provider, be it dentist, eye doctor, or behavioral health. We also help with scheduling transportation services to, our, uh, to your medical appointments. Uh, we also offer um, many more uh, services like that. Our clients also receive a reminder both by mail and phone uh, and are encouraged to return to help them complete the renewal for health insurance coverage. And best of all, our services are completely free. Uh, in the next segments, uh, my colleagues will give you more detailed information about each health insurance program, Medi-Cal, Covered California, and Medicare, and also some other resources available to persons that do not qualify for any of these programs. I encourage you to write your questions uh, in the chat and uh, at the end of our segment, uh, we will uh, ask, uh, sorry, we'll ask those uh, questions uh, uh, to our program staff. And if the questions are about something specific to you, they will be answered personally in a private consultation at the end of the workshop. So after the, uh, the doctor has presented, uh, we will have uh, private uh, consultations if you, if you wish to uh, have a uh, question that's specific to your situation. And now, uh, Nancy Gonzalez will provide information about the Medi-Cal program. Hello, good morning. My name is Nancy Gonzalez. I'm the enrollment specialist here at CHI. Welcome, and just thank you, Rodrigo. As Rodrigo stated, I will be providing a little bit of information about the Medi-Cal program. Um, the different kinds of Medi-Cal that there are within the Medi-Cal program and what it could potentially cover. Okay, so the medical program is offered, um, it's a, a health insurance provided to a free or low cost health coverage to people, uh, depending on their income and also resources. Um, this program is available for children, adults and seniors. Um, the eligibility is based on income, the number of family size in the household, immigration status is also considered, mm, but uh, um, there are programs that are available uh, without a legal status. Um, children now up to the age of 26 could potentially get a uh, full scope Medi-Cal, um, depending if they're eligible for the other criteria, and also pregnant women could uh, potentially get um, Medi-Cal as well. For the Medi-Cal program is open uh, year round, and like I had mentioned before, there are different uh, Medi-Cal programs. So if we can move to the next slide, please. So the programs that we have within the Medi-Cal are full scope Medi-Cal, full scope Medi-Cal with a premium of $13 to $39 a month, uh, pregnancy related Medi-Cal, restricted or also known as emergency Medi-Cal, and Medi-Cal with the share of cost. Um, the full scope Medi-Cal covers uh, dental, mental health, uh, physical health, and also vision. Um, the services that uh, go along with the pregnancy related services and restricted um, are related to that um, 
situation. For example, if it's pregnancy, um, that Medi-Cal will only cover anything pertaining to your pregnancy. Um, if it's restricted, please remember it is all considered an emergency. Um, this kind of Medi-Cal will not cover uh, regular doctor visits or vision or dental. It's just for an emergency, uh, possibly just in the hospital. Um, one thing to encourage your clients is that if it is restricted, uh, please remember, if you go into the ER, it has to be a life and death situation. The doctor still needs to code it as an emergency or else unfortunately the client will be receiving a bill uh, later down the line. We also have the Medi-Cal with the share of cost. Um, that Medi-Cal is basically depending on income, uh, which means the client would need to potentially pay their share of cost first before the Medi-Cal program could hopefully pay the rest. And uh, one I'm sorry that I missed, left out was the one with uh, the premium. Um, this Medi-Cal is usually for children under the age of 19. Um, it's usually for those, um, I'm not sure, back in the days we had a program called Healthy Families. So those children kind of moved into the Medi-Cal program and now um, families could still earn higher income, um, but the children would have a payment of $13 per month. Now you would only pay for a max of three children. The fourth child could potentially be free. So that's why it's only up to $39. If we could go to the next slide, please. Okay, here in front of us, we have um, the Medi-Cal health plans. Um, just uh, a glimpse of what the old Medi-Cal card used to look like. It's this one right here with the white and blue. Uh, the one behind that, uh, the one with flowers, that is our new Medi-Cal card. Both cards are um, accepted. So, um, but if you lose your card, you could, once we order one, you will be getting the one with the orange flowers. Right here to the right, um, it's the two health plans that are under the Medi-Cal program. The health plans are current family health care and also health net. Uh, these are the managed care plans that would be the ones making the determination in regards to if you need to see a specialist or any authorization that you would need. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and as mentioned before, the Medi-Cal uh, program for those that get full scope Medi-Cal, uh, mental health uh, services are available for children, adults, and seniors. This could include uh, counseling sessions for substance abuse or um, disorder service, um, such as treatment for drugs and alcohol addiction. The Vision Health also provides uh, vision testing, um, eye exams once every 24 months, and some beneficiaries could also get glasses. Physical health, please remember, we're always trying to encourage our clients to go to the doctor, not to wait until there's an emergency. So the physical health um, portion of the Medi-Cal covers um, doctor's appointments, family planning, hospitalizations, medications, preventive and wellness service, um, chronic disease management, outpatient and emergency services. So here is where if the client has full scope Medi-Cal, they are able to go to any urgent care, they're able to go to the hospital. And if it's full scope Medi-Cal, they should not be seeing a bill. Also dental health. Uh, the dental includes regular checkups. Uh, please remember once a year, um, we encourage your clients to go. Some, especially children, probably might go every six months. Um, but checkups, fillings, extractions, and dentures are also covered. Next slide, please. And that is my information for the Medi-Cal program. Um, I will hand it over to our enrollment counselor, Cecilia Flores, who will be touching a little bit more in regards to Cover California. Cecilia? There you go. Thank you, Nancy. Um, again, my name is Cecilia Flores. I'm a certified enrollment counselor. Um, and while medical offers free or low cost um, health coverage, there is also um, Cover California, um, which it is a marketplace where you can compare um, quality health plans and choose um, the one that is right for you and your family. Um, and your case is, evalu is evaluated according to um, your family size, um, your age, income, and your um, immigration status. Uh, with Cover California, there is also financial assistance available. 
Um, there are subsidies that can help you lower the monthly premium and the amount of subsidy depends um, on your age, region and annual household income. Uh, federal subsidies can be offered up to 400% of the federal um, poverty guideline, while the state subsidies can be up to 600% of the federal um, poverty guideline. And unlike Medi-Cal, Cover California has annual enrollment period. Um, you should consider it in order to enroll with, um, without having a qualifying event. Um, let me see, the open enrollment is from November 1st to January 31st. Um, but there is also a qualifying life events where you can still enroll into Cover California. And that it, that could be after the um, open enrollment date, which is um, gonna be um, January 31st. So if you have a qualifying event after January 31st, um, one of the qualify, qualifying events are uh, marriage, divorce, new family member, death of a family member, change of immigration status, or if you move to um, California from another state. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Cover California is available to all Californians until May 15th um, without the need of having a qualifying event. And the health plans offered um, in Cover California cover all 10 essential ben health benefits. Among them are preventive, outpatient and emergency care, laboratory tests and medications, pediatric vision and dental services. And um, current residents can choose from the following health plans, which are um, Anthem Blue Cross, Blue Shell of California, Kaiser Permanente, or HealthNet. Also remember that um, there is a state mandate which requires individuals to have health coverage or they may be subject to a penalty um, on their annual state um, tax. And the penalty can be a flat rate or um, 2.5% and the flat rate for 2020 is 750 for adults and um, 375 for children under the age of 18 years of age. Um, I guess that all, that's all the information that I wanna share with you. Um, so if you have any questions or need additional information, um, our agency can assist you with those, um, any of those programs. And thank you for your attention and now um, I will give the space to my coworker, Marisol. She's um, our outreach specialist, who will also provide um, additional information on additional services. Go ahead, Marisol. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, like Cecilia mentioned, um, my name is Marisol Guillen. I'm the outreach specialist uh, for CHI. And I'll be talking about the Medicare program and also offering other uh, resources for the community. Uh, so the Medicare program is for um, individuals uh, who are permanent residents or citizens, and they have to meet uh, one of the following ca categories. So they're either 65 years or old, 65 years or older. Um, also, if they're under 65, uh, they need to have a certain disabilities in order to qualify for Medicare. It's usually those that have been receiving um, um, Social Security um, um, income for more than two years and also those who have um, end-stage renal disease. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, Medicare uh, is a little bit different uh, compared to Medi-Cal and Cover California. For Medicare, uh, it's, um, they have parts. So different parts are gonna cover different benefits. Uh, the Medicare Part A will cover anything related to hospital, uh, skilled nursing facility, uh, hospice care, and that includes home, home health care and also blood tests. For the Part, T, part B, it's gonna include uh, all medically necessary services, uh, including preventive services, outpatient services, anything mental health related, and also the medical equipment that you need. Part D will cover all your prescriptions. And Part C is a combination of all of them. So Part C will cover Part A, Part B, and Part D. Uh, Part C is, um, it usually offers additional benefits, and I'll be talking a little bit more about what Part C means. Can go to the next one, please. So for Medicare, you have two different options. You can stay with the original uh, Medicare, which is Part A and B, and this would cover 80% of your medical needs. So if you don't have any uh, other insurance, such as Medi-Cal, Medi 
uh, you would be responsible for the 20%. If you are uh, low income and you qualify for both Medicare and Medi-Cal, Medi-Cal will help you pay anything that Medicare doesn't cover. Uh, however, Medicare will always be your primary insurance and Medi-Cal will come in as your secondary insurance. If you decide to take the route of uh, taking a Medicare Advantage plan, which is the Part C, uh, that would cover you Part A, Part B, and usually Part D. Um, those are covered through Medicare Advantage plans, and they offer additional services such as uh, dental services, gym membership, hearing services, transportation, and vision, vision services. Uh, for this, you would have to select the um, health plan that is uh, best for you, uh, and not every health plan is going to have all the benefits that I just mentioned. It varies by the county and also it varies by the carrier that you decide to choose. Uh, some of the Medicare Advantage plans here in our county can be uh, free, so there is no cost to you, but there's some other plans that you would have to pay a monthly premium in order to receive all the benefits. Uh, if you do uh, have a low income, uh, you are able to get Medi-Cal as well, and they would help you pay for anything that um, Medicare doesn't cover. Um, and just like, uh, if you can go to the next slide, it, just like Cover California, Medicare also has important deadlines, and it's important that you sign up on time, uh, because if you don't do it, you might face a penalty, uh, and the penalty can be uh, for the rest of your life. So for Medicare, it's important that once you turn 65, you're going to start receiving uh, information about Medicare. Um, so you have a seven-month uh, window to sign up, and that is three months before your birthday month, during your birthday month, and then three months after. So that is considered your in initial enrollment period. Uh, then Medicare also has annual enrollment period, which is always from October 15 to December 7. Uh, and this is a time for you to uh, enroll into Medicare and also make any changes th that you need. Uh, all those changes will be effective as of the beginning of the year, uh, so on January 1st. There's also a general enrollment period, which is if you, en um, you it allows you to enroll in Part A and Part B if you miss your enrollment period. And this period is from January 1st to March 31st. Uh, Medicare Advantage also has an enrollment, uh, which also occurs January 1st to March 31st. And this is for you to change within different Medicare Advantage plans or return to the original Medicare. Uh, this is not, um, it doesn't work the other way. So if you have original Medicare and you want to enroll in the Medicare Advantage, you cannot do it during this op open enrollment period. You would have to have um, a special enrollment period to do that or during the annual enrollment period. Um, and then we also have the special enrollment period. So it's if you have any recent changes, uh, you lost your coverage, you move to other um, area, those would make you um, like a, like it, just like Cover California, a qualifying life event that is similar to Medicare. can go to the next one. Uh, and that's all I have for Medicare, but I also want to share some other resources for those that do not qualify for any of the uh, previous um, programs that we just mentioned. Uh, here in our county, there's a wellness program at Care Medical, which allows you to access medical services at a Care Medical clinic. Uh, you would have to go there in order for them to pre-screen you and help you with, with their application process and you're able to receive care there, uh, you will be um, seen, but there can be some costs associated with every visit that you attend. Um, Clinica Sierra Vista, they also have their assurance cards, which is uh, you receive care at Clinica Sierra Vista locations, and depending on your um, uh, case, your family, uh, and your economics, uh, you'll see some charges there. We also have uh, a nonprofit, Cirugia Sin Fronteras. Uh, if you need a surgery, uh, they can help you uh, finance for that surgery. There's money involved with it, you'll have to pay, uh, but they can assist you. And then some um, free programs that we have, uh, Dignity Health ha is, has a community wellness program and they offer health screenings on a monthly basis. 
Uh, due to COVID, they haven't been um, out in the community like they used to, uh, but they do have um, offering those services. Um, they offer um, diabetes uh, tests, the cholesterol tests, the blood pressure tests, uh, and those are free to the community. Uh, we have calendars available and we'll be able to share with, uh, with the community. And then we also know of um, the community health centers. They also offer um, services at their locations and they're on a sliding fee scale. So they'll take into account your, um, your income and then also your family. And you'll see, you'll get the care, but you also get a cost with that. And then there's free clinics that sometimes they're organized by uh, nonprofits or um, a collaboration of different agencies. Uh, here in our county, we know of a free clinic. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, they haven't been um, attending. Uh, but they, um, in the past, they used to have them every three months. And we do collaborate with this clinic. So as soon as we know that they're coming back to offer those free services to the community, we'll make sure to share that uh, on our social media page and also uh, let our clients know. And that's all I have for you. Not sure if there's any questions, Rodrigo. Here we go. Wow, I found the mute button. Uh, thank you, Marisol, and thank you, everyone, for sharing uh, the information about the different programs. Um, we do have a couple of questions already here in the chat. Um, one is, can I apply for Covered California even if I'm offered insurance through work? Um, Cecilia, you, you spoke about Covered California. Would you like to answer that question? Hi, Rodrigo. Um, you, we have to consider uh, different things. If you're being offered health coverage um, through your employer, we have to um, verify if the coverage that they are um, offering you uh, does meet the um, mandate by the state, meaning that if, the, if it does covers a percentage like 60% or more, or if it covers less. Um, and also we had to consider how much you will be paying for the health coverage and also consider your annual um, household income in order to verify that. But if you wanna um, just leave your information if you like, or maybe at the end of the um, workshop, we can um, have like a private, uh, private conversation and I'll be, I'll be willing to um, get more into the details. We, yes, you can. It just depends. We had to um, verify that information. Great. Thank you, Sissy. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, this one's on Medi-Cal. How long after I submit a Medi-Cal application will I know if I was eligible or not for coverage? Uh, Nancy. Um, sure. Um, at this time, due to the pandemic, um, medical applications are being processed a lot faster than before. Before, it would take a, a roughly about 45 working days. So we're talking Monday through Friday. So potentially two months and a half before. Now, due to the pandemic, uh, cases are being worked a lot faster. Honestly, I think um, you should receive an appointment uh, letter by mail, hopefully within two weeks. So if you haven't heard anything and it's already been three weeks, I would definitely go ahead and outreach to the person that assisted you with the application. Um, that way they could do some follow-up um, and hopefully see what's happening because usually by then you should have received that appointment letter. Um, again, if you need any help, uh, please feel free to also contact us and we could try your best to see how to assist you. Okay, and uh, now I wanna, uh, we do have another question on, on the chat, but does anybody have a question from uh, those uh, that wanna uh, voice out that question here in front of the group? No? Okay, uh, the question, uh, the other question in the chat was, I heard that I do not need to complete my renewal packet uh, at the Medi-Cal office Oh, as the Medi-Cal office is not disenrolling anyone for from Medi-Cal. Is this true? Uh, um, at this time, renewals are uh, not being, um, let's say, forced or required, but they are being highly encouraged. So our encouragement to the community is if you receive one, uh, please attend to it. Please uh, submit it with the required documents. Um, if the case is received, 
and it could be a case that could be renewed at that time, then our local county would renew it. But you are correct. Um, if for some reason you didn't submit it, it is not like you're going to lose your coverage. You will not be disenrolled. Um, but again, uh, if you do receive that packet, we highly encourage you to um, go ahead and submit it at this time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, we're uh, right at right at 11 o'clock. So, uh, Argelia, I'm going to uh, give the microphone back to you. Um, and uh, we can uh, get started with our main presentation. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Um, we'll continue on with our agenda. Um, first off, I would like to introduce our uh, presenter for the COVID-19 presentation today. She is a volunteer with the California Emergency Medical Service Authority, uh, the Central Valley Medical Unit and additionally serves as a medical director for the Bakersfield Recovery Service Rehabilitation Facility. She is a board president of the Kern Regional Center and member of the Developmental Service of Task Force of California. And she is currently a board certified family medicine physician with a fellowship in primary care um, psychiatry, practicing as a medical director and physician with Dignity Health Foundations Physicians Medical Group in Bakersfield. So please welcome uh, Dr. Jasmine Carr Baines um, to our workshop. Hi, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we could hear awesome. you. Okay, perfect. So I just wanted to say, first of all, good morning to everyone. Good to see everyone again. I saw you guys last week as well. Um, so I'm Dr. Baines. I have some information for you guys in regarding to the COVID-19 vaccine. I know there's a lot of concerns out there, a lot of questions, a lot of people worry, did I get the right vaccine? Um, you know, is the vaccine appropriate? Um, I can understand anytime anything happens very fast, there is always cause for concern. I'm just here to give some reassurance that although things happen very fast, um, it's, it's really the magic of teamwork and power and effort that went behind creating this COVID-19 vaccine. It was um, not a conspiracy, it was not magic. It's really just the magic of people coming together and getting proper funding and getting a great team together. So it's really the magic of teamwork more than anything. So key things to know about the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, first of all, the COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Um, there are side effects that can happen from the vaccine and they're very comparable to other vaccines that we've had, like the flu vaccine or other vaccines that you've had in the past. Um, it takes about two weeks after you're fully vaccinated for the body to build a proper immunity against the virus. So just because you got the vaccine today doesn't necessarily mean that you're fully vaccinated and you have a uh, full immune response protection until two weeks after the final dose of your vaccine. So people who have been fully vaccinated can start to do some things that were stopped during the pandemic. And I'll go over that in a little bit. We can have the next slide. My, okay, so we'll go over the top three vaccines that we have out right now. We have Pfizer, Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson. So Pfizer is the first one that came out. It's two doses that are usually 21 days apart. Give me one second. Let me close the door. There's some background noise. Hold on. Okay, I am so sorry about that. It got a little loud. So, um, so the Pfizer vaccine um, are two doses, 21 days apart. Um, and it's usually given in the arm as with the other vaccines that we have as well, does not contain eggs, preservatives, or latex. 
So who should get vaccinated? Um, it's recommended for people over the age of 16 and older at this time. They are currently doing studies for people younger than 16. And once we have sufficient clinical evidence that it's safe for people under the age of 16, I'm pretty sure they will open that up. Um, my anticipation is within the next month or two, they might have those clinical studies um, out. So um, how well does the Pfizer vaccine work? Well, based on evidence, it's 95% effective at preventing laboratory confirmed COVID-19 illness. So Pfizer is pretty effective at 95%. Um, and then who shouldn't get vaccinated? Um, this is something that you should definitely have a conversation with your either your physician or your medical provider if you have any concerns. Also, at the time of every vaccine, we have a screening sheet that we ask specific questions for. Um, we screen for any history of anaphylaxis, um, which is a life-threatening allergic reaction to any component of a vaccine or anything in the past. Um, we usually ask if you are immunosuppressed and we usually ask about other medical illnesses. So please have that dialogue with the person or place that you're getting the vaccine from and we'll be able to tell you and see if you fit for the vaccine. Uh, next slide, please. So the Moderna. So Moderna is the one that um, we have available here in Bakersfield quite widely. Um, I do believe it's being used um, in, in clinics in addition to, I think Bakersfield College also has this one available. I believe Pfizer is at the uh, Cal State Bakersfield. So Moderna is also a great vaccine. Um, this one is also two doses. There, it's 28 days. So the Pfizer was 21, Moderna is 28 days apart. This also um, does not contain eggs, preservatives, or latex. Um, currently, the Moderna is recommended for people over the age of 18. Pfizer was 16, Moderna is 18. Um, and like I said before, they're still studying this in people under the age of 18. And should we get proper, sufficient clinical evidence that it's safe, they should open that up. Um, also, same, uh, who should not get vaccinated, please have that dialogue with your medical provider. Um, there really aren't big contraindications to any of these vaccines. They're pretty safe. Um, and then this one is 94.1% effective um, for uh, preventing laboratory confirmed COVID-19 illness. All right, next slide. So the Moderna and Pfizer are what we call the mRNA vaccines. So mRNA vaccine is a technology that's been studied for very many years. It was um, researched and they were uh, working on getting mRNA vaccines out. Um, because of COVID-19, they got the proper funding and research and teamwork together to put this vaccine out faster. Um, but mRNA vaccines are a new technology, but again, the science has been around for very many years. It's a very safe vaccine. What it really does, and you know, I think the most important thing is to understand how a vaccine works so that it can dispel any fears that people might have. The mRNA vaccine is a messenger RNA piece of uh, RNA that gets it's covered by a preservative so that uh, it does not just your stomach cells don't destroy it in your or it doesn't get destroyed in your blood. I'm sorry. Um, and when they inject it, it goes into your cell and it tells your cell to make more antibodies to the specific spike protein, which is on the top of coronavirus. So the reason it's called coronavirus is it's actually a Spanish term corona, which means a crown. So it has these little spikes on the outside, which make it look like it's a crown. So um, coronavirus has these little spikes and there's antibodies to those spikes. So should your body um, 
come across one of those, it's going to produce an antibody and destroy that virus that's in your body. So that's how mRNA vaccines work. It basically goes inside your cell and tells your cell to make antibodies to that spike protein on the surface of the virus. Next slide, please. So the other virus that we have, uh, vaccine that we have is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This is a vector vaccine. It is different from the other two. Um, and I'll go over exactly how it's different. Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a one shot. Uh, you don't need to have two doses. It's just one shot in the arm and you are good to go. Uh, Johnson & Johnson was 66.3 effective in clinical, tri tr clinical trials. However, I do want to give a caveat. These are clinical tri trials that were expedited. And actu in actuality, uh, the numbers are actually much better. They're much higher for all three vaccines. And we're actually daily seeing new and new research coming out saying the effectiveness of these vaccines are actually much higher than what was reported originally. Um, and then again, who should get vaccinated? This is safe for people age 18 or older. Um, and again, it's pretty much the same contraindications to the other two vaccines. Um, this also does not contain eggs, preservatives, or latex. Um, and then we can go to the next slide. So how is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine different than the other two? So Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a viral vector. So what they did was they took the cousin of coronavirus, which is the adenovirus. Adenovirus is a virus that's very prevalent in society. Um, and they chose a certain adenovirus that um, is not, it, it's not strong. It doesn't really cause much. And they decided to use that as a vector that will go inside and uh, help your body produce antibodies. So again, you cannot get coronavirus from any of these vaccines because none of them have coronavirus in it. Even the Johnson & Johnson does not have coronavirus. It has adenovirus. And adenovirus is a very prevalent virus in the society. Um, and again, it's not, it's not going into your DNA. It's not being integrated in your DNA. And it, in no way does it change your DNA. None of these vaccines do. Um, next slide, please. So have you been fully vaccinated? How do you know? Well, people are considered fully vaccinated two weeks after their second dose of Pfizer and Moderna or two weeks after the single dose of Johnson & Johnson. So the key to know here is that it takes two weeks after your second dose, or if it's a Johnson & Johnson, the first dose, for you to have full immune response. And the reason that is, is because when you produce the antibody, when the virus comes in, you have to produce the sufficient memory B cells for your body to have that memory keyed into itself so that in the future, if you get exposed to coronavirus, your body can produce those antibodies. And it takes about two weeks for you to create that memory. Next step, slide, please. So common side effects from the vaccine. Um, I've been here in the clinic. I've been, we've been giving vaccines for a very long time. And what I've seen goes along with everything that's on this slide. Um, you might have pain, redness or swelling at the site of injection. You might feel tired, headache, muscle pain, chills, fever, nausea. I'll give you my personal um, experience. When I, had, I received the Pfizer, when I received the first injection, I had a little bit of a mild headache, but it went away within a couple of hours. Um, after the second dose is when I felt, um, about 24 hours later, I felt a little tired and I had a low grade fever of about 99s, 100 at 
at one point and it, I was tired for about two days. So these effects are normal actually. For you, your body is basically producing a response to the fact that we just injected your body with a vaccine. So it's normal to have side effects. It's normal to feel tired. It's normal to feel um, even a low grade temperature, even at the flu, after the flu vaccine, most people experience this and that's your immune system responding to the vaccine. Now, if you ever start getting uh, high fevers, of course, you have to talk to your medical provider. Um, and if you start exhibiting any symptoms that are not normal or not what I discussed around here, you have excessive swelling, you must seek medical care right away. So um, helpful tips after you get your, your vaccine, applying a clean, cool, wet washcloth over the area. Um, will help and then drinking lots of fluid um, and you know dressing lightly not getting too uh, too warm is also something else that the CDC recommends um, but the biggest key right here is making sure you drink enough water next slide please oh and then I also wanted to mention please talk to your your provider before taking any medications before the vaccine. Taking medications before a vaccine might not be appropriate to, for everyone. Um, if you took something before the vaccine and you show up at a vaccination site, please let them know what you took. Go ahead, next site. All right, so now that we're two weeks post-vaccination, what's changed? So CDC currently recommends that if you've been fully vaccinated and that, like I said before, it's two weeks after either your second dose or two weeks after your Johnson & Johnson one dose, you can gather indoors with fully vaccinated people without wearing a mask. Now, the caveat with this is, are you for sure certain that the person you're hanging out with got vaccinated or not? Um, so, and then the other caveat with this is everybody's immune, res immune system responds differently to the vaccine. Um, there might be people that will develop full protection and then there might be people that don't. So I would still stress caution to um, be as cautious for your health as much as possible. If you have any chronic illnesses, if you're immunocompromised in in whichever way, please use proper precautions to protect yourself even after being fully vaccinated. Um, you can gather indoors with unvaccinated people from only one other household without mask, unless any of those people or anyone they live with have an increased risk of severe illness for COVID-19. So if you're around people that have any immune compromised uh, illness, please take caution so that you don't go back and take it to them because their response to the vaccine might not have been as strong as yours. So you might still pass it on to people that have any compromised immune system. All right. And then if you've been around someone who has COVID-19, you do not need to stay away from others or get tested unless you have symptoms. These are current CDC recommendations. However, if you live in a group setting, like a correctional or detention facility or assisted living or any group home and around someone who has COVID-19, you should still stay away from others for 14 days and even get tested, even if you don't have symptoms. This is the current CDC guideline. Again, if you have any questions, please speak with your medical provider and they can clarify any of these. Next slide, please. So what has not changed? So if you've been fully vaccinated, you should still take steps to protect yourself and others in many situations like wearing a mask, please continue wearing your mask. That's very important right now. 
staying at least six feet apart from others, avoiding crowds and poorly ventilated spaces. Take these precautions whenever you are in public whenever you are around gatherings with unvaccinated people from more than one household or visiting with unvaccinated people who are at increased risk of severe illness from COVID-19. Again, that's your immunocompromised, um, anybody with chronic illness and chronic illness diabetes does count as one of those. Um, so you should still, even if you've been fully vaccinated, CDC still recommends that you avoid medium or large sized gatherings. You should still delay domestic or international travel if you don't need to travel. You should watch out for symptoms of COVID-19, especially if you've been around someone who's sick um, and you still need to follow all guidance in that has been provided by your workplace. So next slide. So again, just key points. I think we've already been over the, with um, you know what fully vaccinated people can do and what they should continue to do. The main message really is, you know, every you are the best judge of your health. If you have any compromised health condition, immune system illness, any chronic condition please take as many precautions to protect yourself. Even if you've been fully vaccinated, none of these vaccines are 100%. And the reason they are not 100% is there's a lot of other factors that go into being um, exposed and infected with COVID-19. So I can't stress this more. Please wear your mask. Please adhere to all guidelines, social distancing, please still continue to avoid gatherings. You are the best advocate for your health more than anyone. Next slide, please. And then uh, what do we know and what we're still learning? So we know that COVID-19 vaccines are very effective at preventing COVID-19 disease, especially severe illness and death. What we're still learning is how effective the viruses are, the vaccines are against the variants of the virus. I'm pretty sure everyone here has been uh, watching the news in regards to these variants that are out there. And that's normal. A vaccine mutates um, all the time. And we anticipated that there would be some um, mutations in the vaccine. Um, I think what we didn't anticipate was how they would affect um, mortality and how they would get people sick. And we're still really learning a lot on the variants and how lethal they really are. So there's still a lot of research to be done. So that's why I want to harp again, please be the best advocate for your health. Um, early data shows that the vaccines may work against some of the variants, but we're still researching that. So until we know an answer for sure, please protect yourself. Um, we know that other prevention steps help stop the spread of COVID-19 and that these steps are still important even as vaccines are being distributed. So we're still learning how well COVID-19 vaccines keep people from spreading the disease and we're still learning how long COVID-19 vaccines can protect people. I think there was some research that actually came out today saying, Pfizer came out saying that, um, that their vaccine definitely protects for six months and they're looking into research to see if it protects you for longer than that. Um, and as we know more, you know, CDC will continue to update the recommendations for both vaccinated and unvaccinated people. Please visit your CDC vet website. They have um, different resources in different languages and lots of great answers to a lot of questions. Next slide, please. Um, so what you need to know the vaccines currently approved for use in the United States are effective, and that right now um, is your Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. 
and they're an important tool to help stop the pandemic. And they help people. Um, yeah, thank you for that link to CDC. It's in the chat. Um, the vaccines help protect people who are vaccinated from getting sick or severely ill. Now, the other thing with the vaccine is um, should you get exposed and get infected with COVID-19, the vaccine can actually lessen the symptoms, which is the same thing that we um, said for the flu vaccine in the past is as well. So you can get healthier and back to your old self as soon as possible. Um, and CDC recommends you get a COVID-19 vaccine as soon as one is available to you. And the good news is that on Monday, California has approved everyone over the age of 16 to be eligible to get the vaccine. And I highly encourage that you visit the website. I believe it's myturn.com. If you can put that link in the chat, uh, myturn.ca.gov. Thank you for that. Um, that is the website that you can visit to see if you're eligible. And like I said, come Monday morning, you should be on there typing in, getting your appointments. There are great centers here in Bakersfield that have opened up, uh, Bakersfield College, Cal State Bakersfield. Many of your uh, provider offices are also giving the vaccine. So you don't, all you need to do is go to myturn.ca.gov and click in and they will tell you where it is that you can go for an appointment. It's very super easy. Um, and then COVID-19 vaccines will help protect you from getting severely sick or ill with COVID-19, I went over that. So go ahead, next slide. All right, and then what we know about the new variants and the COVID-19 vaccines. So what we know is that the new variants cause, causing COVID-19 have emerged. Um, and current data suggests that the COVID-19 vaccines used in the United States should work against these variants. So it's essential to get these vaccines. What we don't know is evidence is limited on how the new COVID-19 variants will affect how these vaccines work in real world conditions. So we're monitoring the situation. We're trying to research as fast as we can. Things are changing day by day. Um, really the biggest key take home message is get your vaccine, encourage other people to get their vaccine as well. Next slide. And then what can you do? Of course, please continue wearing a mask, even if you're fully vaccinated. Stay six feet apart, avoid crowds, and of course, get your vaccine. Next slide, I think we're done. Any questions I can help answer? Thank you, Dr. Baines. Uh, this is Rodrigo Vasquez again. Uh, I do have uh, a couple of questions here in our, in our chat. Um, and you've already touched on one of them. Um, one, the question is, how long will the vaccine protect you in months and years? And, and you know, like I said, we are still researching and understanding um, the response of the vaccine. Things are changing daily. Uh, this morning, actually, Pfizer did release that their vaccine is effective up to six months, and we're still learning um, with more research if it will be longer than that. Um, and that should be, and that information definitely will hit CDC first, so that's a good website to get resources from. Great, thank you. Uh, we have another question, it says, hello, doctor, what is your opinion in sending my kids back to school. They are eight and six. We've, we've never had COVID. Sure, um, this is a very great question. And I get this all the time in the clinic. Parents are concerned. I just want to uh, reassure you that schools are taking all protocols and necessary actions to make sure that your kids are safe at school. And that's part of the reason why it took so long for them to open up and a lot of it had to do to make sure your schools had the proper protection. I would feel safe sending my child back to school at this time. 
And also, I like I said, within the next month or so, I do feel that they will have proper studies and research for kids under the age of 18 and 16 to get the vaccine. Um, at this time, schools are taking that into consideration. If your school is allowing, please be reassured that they are taking all necessary precautions to make sure that your kids are safe. And I do trust them on that. Great. Uh, another question um, in our chat is, if you're fully vaccinated, is there less of a chance of not getting sick if you're exposed to the virus? Yep. And and a follow-up question, uh, do you think this is going to be like the flu, like something seasonal where you get the vaccine every year? Great questions. Again, I always enjoy these questions here. We got some great people in the room. Um, no, this is definitely a question I get asked quite often. So first of all, yes, if you are vaccinated and you get exposed to the virus in the future, um, you will have studies show lessened symptoms of the coronavirus. Um, you won't have that prolonged illness. And this was exactly what we saw with the flu vaccine that we've had prior as well. People that got the flu vaccine when they came down with the flu were uh, had shorter duration of symptoms and less severe symptoms as well. And then so classically, what we know about viruses in research is every time we have a virus that emerges, a new novel virus, usually it will uh, mutate. And mutation is normal. Viruses do mutate. They change. And usually the course of time shows that as a virus mutates, they actually become more contagious but they become less virulent, meaning they're not as deadly. Now, that is usually what we see with viruses, and we hope that that is what we see with the mutations that we're seeing in our community now. However, until we know for sure, because this is a novel virus, we don't know for sure exactly if it will follow what normal viruses do, um, we would definitely um, make sure everybody adheres to guidelines. And once we know for sure, we'll definitely open it up. Um, and then, yes, I do believe this will be a uh, seasonal, <laughs> seasonal thing. I do believe there will be a vaccine at least yearly. The question right now on the table, which they're researching is, will it be yearly? Will, it, will you need a booster in six months? Um, that is something that is changing, um, and I hope it's not. I hope it's every year and doesn't have to be more than that, um, and I really hope and pray that that's what we see. Thank you, Dr. Baines. Uh, another question here. Uh, how long does someone need to wait after having the pneumonia vaccine to get the COVID-19 vaccine? Great question. Again, right now, um, we are not recommending that you get a vaccine close to the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, we are actually recommending anywhere from one to two weeks um, in between getting the vaccine. Um, I would definitely wait. Um, like again, this is a new vaccine. We're just monitoring for side effects. We don't want any cross side effects from different vaccines. So um, it's different from place to place, but it's usually one to two weeks after um, getting any other vaccine. And then after you get the COVID-19 vaccine, please don't get another vaccine for one to two weeks after. Great. Um, you mentioned that there were some medications that uh, you should not be taking uh, when you take the vaccine. Can you give us a, a few examples of what those are, what conditions sure. they, uh, they're for? Sure. Um, if you have any concerns about um, taking, of uh, having any side effects, please consult with your medical provider. Every case is different. Um, we're not recommending that you take anything before a vaccine unless you've been told to by a medical provider. Um, and the real reason behind that is we don't want to 
uh, lessen your immune response to the virus. So certain um, antihistamines like Benadryl or um, Claritin or Zyrtec can decrease your immune response to the vaccine. So, and again, like I said, it's really a risk versus benefit. Is the risk of getting this worse than the side effect of a vaccine? And that's a conversation that I encourage you to have with your medical provider. They will be able to address it. Like I said, every case is different. Everyone has different um, medications that they need and medical illnesses. So please, um, that, that really should be a discussion between you and a medical provider. If you are unable to do that, um, that's definitely something that you can talk with at the vaccination site. Please let them know what medication that you uh, took, and then they'll ask you the proper question to see if it's suitable to proceed with the vaccine or not. And that's very important. I know uh, here, Kern County allergies are so prevalent and uh, you know a lot of us take antihistamines for that so yeah. thank you for that information um, let's see we have more questions here in the chat uh, if you are having symptoms after taking the vaccine can you take pain medication yeah absolutely um, if you're having a fever, we always recommend Tylenol. Fever is 100.4 or over. Um, you know, always try cooling methods as well. A fan or a cool cloth can also help as well. Um, you know, ibuprofen. If, if you are having symptoms, pain or fever, you are definitely allowed to take medications as needed um, for that as well. And of course, if it's not something that was discussed, please consult your medical provider as well. Thank you. Uh, another question, this came in from uh, a private message on social media. Uh, my 19 year old wants to know if there's a safer one, I guess, uh, is that a vaccine they're talking about? Safer one for her age before she heads off to Fresno State in August. What about if she has allergies? Sure. So right now, um, Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen are okay for 19. So she should be okay to get any of them. And my response would be, get whichever one that you can get. <laughs> I think that is the best answer for this question. Um, it, it, it's really showing up and getting the vaccine. Um, the, the profiles, like I said, are very similar. And the even you know, 95 versus 94.1 versus 66. These are all based upon studies that were expedited to have it on the table. Um, however, studies right now are showing that they're much, much more effective than that. So um, vaccines are safe, they're effective, and please visit myturn.ca.gov and they ask you a list of screening questions and if you're eligible, they will move forward and sign you, signing you up. I wouldn't even wait. Um, I would go on there right now and they will tell you when you can get that vaccine and they'll tell you when it is that you'll be eligible as well. Great. Uh, what about people who do have a chronic disease and can't stop taking their regular medications? Great different question. Yeah. So then again, I would, everybody has a different medical illness, different medical profile. That is a question that you must have with you and your medical provider. Um, there are lots of different chronic underlying illnesses, lots of different other medications. Um, and again, if it comes down to it and you're not unable to make an appointment with your medical provider, please have that conversation between you and the person at the vaccination site. They should be able to address that as well. Uh, okay, and a question about uh, the second dose. Do I need to take the vaccine right at the, time of the, at the time of the second dose is scheduled or how long can I wait to take the second dose? I guess the timing, uh, if you're not able to take it at the time you're scheduled, Oh, you mean when you come for the second dose? Yes. So it's at least um, 21 and 28, 21 days for Pfizer, 28 for Moderna. 
Um, so if for whatever reason um, you, I mean, don't take it earlier than that, um, but if for, what, for whatever reason you're a couple of days behind, it should not matter. Um, just get your second dose. Um, the second dose usually um, has the higher amount of side effects because the second dose is a larger amount of the vaccine for the Pfizer and the Moderna. So usually people have a little bit more side effects after the second dose. So I would highly recommend making sure you get the second dose. Um, but it's, it's really, don't take it earlier, but it's okay if, if it's delayed a couple of days or even three. Um, if it's more than that, I still think it would be okay, but that would be a discussion to have with the vaccination site. And uh, let's see, um, is the uh, vaccine safe for pregnant women and breastfeeding women? Yes. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. All right. Uh, let's see, any more questions from the chat? Uh, side effects, underlying conditions. Uh, can people that are currently sick with COVID-19 take the vaccine? No, they actually say fully um, finish the, the course of COVID-19 before getting the vaccine. And that's really um, the, the thinking behind that or the theory behind that is you really want your body to be in its best state possible when you take the vaccine. So your body has the best response to the vaccine. If you're sick, you're considered immunocompromised at that point. So you really want to get better and then give your body the vaccine when it has the full chance of developing a great immune response to that vaccine. It's really about the risks and benefits behind the vaccine. And this is, this is a really great question is really making sure that you take the vaccine when your body is most capable of producing the best immune response. There are people that can get the vaccine and develop a great response. And there's people that can get the vaccine that won't develop that great of a response. And that really depends upon your immune system at the time of taking the vaccine. And uh, let's see, we have a couple more questions here. Uh, can birth control pill or other methods be compromised if uh, a, a woman takes a COVID, uh, COVID vaccine? Sure. Um, at this point, there are no studies that link that that I know of um, that have any interference with uh, birth control uh, or any other type of contraception. However, studies are changing daily. Um, I, I, so far, we don't know that it has any effect on it, is what I can say. All right. And uh, another question here. I have anxiety disorder. How can I get my body ready? Uh, I take meds as needed. Okay. So first of all, it's reassurance. Um, like I was saying at the beginning of this presentation, I think um, we, we all need to take a step back. It's a very, very anxious time. Everybody is very concerned. I myself am I'm very concerned. You know, I have a family. Um, I worry about my parents. I worry about my siblings who are also physicians. Um, there's a lot of worry, there's a lot of anxiety. I think taking a step back and really trusting in the system. Um, I think the messaging around this pandemic has not been the best. Um, there's been a lot of confusion and I apologize on behalf of everything going on that the message has not been clearer. I wish we could have worked together to make a better message. I think the, the main thing was that there were so many things that were happening so fast and we were not prepared. Um, but know that you know your medical provider is here to help guide you through that. Um, please, please prioritize your mental health at this time. It's very, very important that you're getting enough sleep. Um, you know, my dad always tells me this um, whenever I get really anxious, you know, before a big test or something, he says, there are certain things in your control. 
and there are certain things that are not. And it's really about understanding what is in your control or not. At this time, we are in a stage where we're learning so much and it's so concerning to so many. Um, just know that we're all in it together. What you're feeling is normal. Your anxiety is very normal. However, if you start feeling anxious to the point where, point where you start having feelings to hurt yourself or anyone else, or you start hearing or seeing things that other people aren't, please, please seek help. Um, please go in um, either into, if, if it's right away, if you have any thoughts to hurt yourself, of course, into the emergency room or see your medical provider right away. Um, this is an anxious time. People are very scared. Um, and this is a time that you need to be having a discussion with your physician. They can help guide you through a lot of the worries that you have. And like I said before, a lot of things have happened so fast. And the reason it's happened fast is because all eyes were on this. I mean, it's, it's been, yes, I agree. It's, it's never been heard of to have a vaccine out in less than a little over a year. And that's not a conspiracy. It's not any type of, <laughs> of any magic. The only magic is that this is what happens when you have teamwork. This is what happens when you have full funding behind research. I'm, I'm a researcher and I have had to throw away so many research projects due to funding. Um, funding is very poor for science. And this was a time in history where there was an example of us fully funding science and we have a miracle. And that miracle was this vaccine. And that was really an example of the miracle of teamwork and dedication. Um, so hats off to everybody and all the efforts behind this vaccine. So I hope that helped reassure you a little bit. I think so. I think we were all kind of anxious about taking the vaccine and those of us have, uh, that have already taken it and uh, but we're, we're here and uh, so we're living examples of uh, how it's helping. Um, one final question, I think, uh, I don't know if you know the question, the, the answer, uh, I think some of us here uh, at uh, Community Health Initiative might have the answer, but uh, the question is, do you know of any drive up COVID vaccine clinics? Um, so I know Bakersfield College is doing a drive up, but I'm not too certain if it's um, their schedule of when they do it, Cal State Bakersfield, I believe is not a drive up, but I think by Bakersfield College is a drive through. Um, I guess, yeah, I really don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry, um, but I believe Bakersfield, I, Bakersfield College I know for sure is, I just don't know of their schedule of when they have the vaccine. Uh, I'll open it up to staff. I know we're, we've been talking about some of the events coming up where uh, we were talking about a possible drive up uh, vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine clinic, but we weren't sure if that was gonna be the case because of uh, the logistics involved with the uh, uh, observation period and things like that. Uh, and also getting a little bit more information from, from uh, the persons getting the vaccine. So um, anybody? Want to chime in on that? Okay. Well, uh, we'll we'll get some more information about drive-through uh, clinics and send it out. Uh, I know um, uh, the current ones that we do know about are walk-up uh, vaccine clinics, uh, and only because, like I said, the logistics. Uh, uh, don't, uh, uh, you know, they're not uh, very well, uh, you know, for, for drive through because of the observation period and all that. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Baines. Uh, and uh, uh, we won't keep you anymore. I think we kept you a little bit longer than, than, than we, what we anticipated. Uh, but thank you very much for all the information that you've provided and uh, 
uh, hope the uh, participants uh, gained a lot of uh, knowledge from your presentation and the questions that you answered. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for creating the space for everyone. Um, again, main key messages really is see your medical provider if you're having any questions. Um, CDC is a great resource myturn.ca.gov to go ahead and schedule your appointment. I would go, I wouldn't wait, I would do that right away. And I'll tell you when you'll be eligible for the vaccine. And of course, um, make sure that you're prioritizing your own mental health. It's very important. Anxiety, um, stress is normal at this point, but what's not normal is when you start having thoughts to hurt yourself, hurt anyone else, and of course, if you start seeing or hearing things, or if you have any underlying mental health illness, right now is the time to make sure you prioritize that. So thank you again. And thank you guys for creating this space. Oh, and thank, thank you, you for putting that information for the National Suicide Prevention Life. Thank you. Thank you, Helia, for being on top of that. Thank you. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Doctor, for such a great presentation. Thank you guys. Great to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to hand it over to uh, Fatima, who's going to be doing our closing um, for our present or our workshop today. Uh, Fatima. Okay. Thank you, Rodrigo, for that. Um, so this concludes our workshop for today. Uh, thank you for um, participating, everyone, for interacting, um, asking questions, and we especially want to give a big thank you to Dr. Baines uh, for being very informative about COVID-19 and the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so now, as promised, we are going to be raffling off a gift for everyone who participated um, and who connected with us today. This is going to be the super cool prize that one of you is going to win. Um, so whoever wins um, does have to be in the workshop right now at the moment. And you guys will have to come pick it up at our um, location at Mercy Downtown. Um, so go ahead, Adhelia, and do the spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so our winner is Paulina Diaz. Paulina, Yay. congrats, Paulina. Uh, so we will be reaching out to you uh, to give you um, further details of when you can come pick it up, please. Um, so now I'm going to hand it off to uh, Marisol, who will be creating breakout rooms with our certified enrollment counselors. If anyone has a specific question about um, their case or their situation, uh, they can ask um, their question with our certified enrollment counselors. Um, so just stay behind and Marisol will uh, put you guys in a breakout room with one of them. So thank you everyone for joining um, and interacting and connecting with us today. Hey Marisol. Thank you, Fatima. Um, so now we're going to have a space for you to ask questions to our certified enrollment counselors. If you need help, please um, um, add a comment as part of the chat or raise your hand and I'll be able to connect you to a private uh, breakout room. If you don't have any questions, then uh, you're, our, we, this concludes our presentation. So um, you're, you're free to leave the meeting and, um, and yeah, thank you for joining us and uh, we hope you really enjoy all the, the presentation uh, from our team and also uh, the information from the doctor. <laughs>